Well, tomorrow's a big day, our fourth annual turn paper sale. And we've all invested a lot of time and energy, and I know we've all given up a lot. Brian here lost a girlfriend, and, well, Gregory had to give up the track team, and, well, me? I've lost a lot of sleep between dating Brian's old girlfriend and track team practices. <laughs> That's not important right now. What is important? What is important is that tomorrow is a success. And who's gonna make it a success? We are! I love you guys. <laughs> hey Matt, what you think? Speckle? <laughs> it says special. Look, we're in the education business. No one's gonna buy English papers from guys who can't even spell. I'm sorry. It's my worst subject. <laughs> I couldn't even spell my first name until I was seven. Does that make me dumb? No, Eli. Oh. Get it! Julie, how's my favorite sister? Hormonal problems again? All right, you little hellhound. I can't find my diary. Oh? Look, Matthew, I want that diary back. Don't you even dream of selling it. There are a lot of very private thoughts and experiences in that. It should be mine alone. Oh, you mean like uh, how you practice French kissing on your toy Snoopy? <laughs> I want that diary back. <laughs> okay. I read it. I didn't take it. <laughs> Your right to privacy is dear to me, sis. <laughs> I would absolutely die if anybody found out what was in that diary. Shh, come on, I don't want the guys to hear this. They shouldn't even know you have a diary. Well, okay. Sorry. Julie and Snoopy sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. <laughs> Gee, I wish I had a sister to torture. <laughs> Use your imagination. You got a grandmother. <laughs> oh, Brian. Did you put the term papers where I told you? Yep. Did it last night. They're under the loose floorboard of the vacant apartment across the hall. Hey, you're executive material, Brian. <laughs> Relax. It's just the manager. Mr. Donatelli! Welcome to my home. See this smile? Know why it's there? They found a cure for cellulite and sweat stains, sir? The polite act won't work, you little outlaw. I got a lease with a name on it. A tenant's name on it. I did it. I rented the apartment across the hall. Let me see that. Oh, we gotta get that apartment back. Eli, two years ago, how'd we get rid of that guy who used to live there? Beckerman. Beckerman. <laughs> oh, hi, Mom. Oh, hi, honey. Hello, Eli. Hi, Mrs. Burton. How was your day? Oh, the usual. Mr. Claiborne forgot his two o'clock appointment. I covered for him. He lost his notes in the Considine case. I found them. Couldn't find his way to the courthouse. I took him. He picked up his check for $20,000. He bought me coffee. <laughs> the usual. I can't believe the prices of things today. Mrs. Burton? Oh, honey, I'm gonna go take a shower. Would you catch the phone if it rings? Oh, Mort just called. Oh, why don't you call him back? Maybe two can go out this weekend? Mort? <laughs> Might as well. No one else seems to care. Maybe it's me. Hey, guys today would know class who walked up and bit him. I've tried. <laughs> huh? Nothing, nothing. Anyhow, don't run yourself down, ever. You're the best. Oh, honey. Now, how about calling more? You got the number? Oh, yeah. He makes it very easy. You just dial Zoo Life, and there he is. I don't know, Matt. Call it women's intuition, but I don't think she likes more. <laughs> Mort's a good guy, and he's rich. Not like those other guys who used to call before I came up with a story about her having diptheria. <laughs> what a bunch of losers. 
Now look, at least more to be able to take care of her the way she deserves. That, that, that's all I really care about. I don't know, Matt. I still think people who get married should love each other. Let's move on, okay, Eli? <laughs> oh, Matt, I heard around school that Julie knows that we're up to something. She says that she's gonna watch you like a hawk. What a woman. <laughs> anyway, now I gotta get rid of her and the guy across the hall by tomorrow. Do you have any ideas? Sorry. <laughs> Open doors breed crime, you know. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. My name is uh, Matthew Burton. You're a next door neighbor. Oh, Norman Lamb. You're next door neighbor. <laughs> Please, it's punch to meet you, sir. <laughs> I, uh, I, I sense from your accent that you're not a native Californian. Am I right, sir? No, oh, I just got in from Chicago. Then, allow me to extend to you a golden state welcome to this paradise of the West Coast. <laughs> and bid you a fond howdy, neighbor. <laughs> Are all California kids like you? Ha! Would that that were true, sir. <laughs> Coffee? Oh, don't mind if I do. Uh, black, thanks. So, if I may be so bold, uh, what occupation is the good fortune of calling you its own? You mean what do I do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'm a writer. You do have a writer's brow, sir. Look. And a decorator's eye. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm just sort of getting settled in. Uh, see, I used to be an insurance salesman, but I figured that... The... Oh, oh, loose floorboard, potential lawsuit. Oh, yeah, I'll have to fix that. Please, sir, leave this task to myself and my little chums. <laughs> Call it a neighborly gesture. Well, thank you. Uh, maybe someday I can return the favor. Well, there's no time like the present, I always say. You, see, you being a writer is very fortuitous. My, my sister happens to be an aspiring writer. Is that a fact? Indeed. You should have seen what she wrote about stuffed animal infatuation. <laughs> it moved me and my friends to tears. This is an expensive cup of coffee. Please, please, go on. Yes, well, she, she wants to do a piece on the mall for her school paper. But frankly, she's got a bad case of writer's block. Aha, uh -huh, and you would like me to help her? You got a mind like a steel trap, sir. <laughs> But you see, the important thing is for you to help her under the guise of her helping you. Uh, for instance, tell her that you're a writer and you need to go to the mall to put your finger on the pulse of California youth. Do I have to use those words? You can beat it out on drums if it'll make you happy. <laughs> Just take her tomorrow between the hours of two and six. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Let me get this Good. straight. I'll make sure she's in the laundry room at one. She, uh, she has a limited attention span, so keep it simple, okay? <laughs> to the neighborhood. <laughs> well, yet another successful term paper sale. Listen, tell the guys that we'll split the money in the teacher's lounge on Monday, okay? Okay, thanks, Matt. All right, take care, Eli. Hi, Julie. Gee, I wish you'd cheer for me sometime. Okay. Yay, Eli, your retreat's lost. <laughs> Oh, Julie, did you have a good time wherever you were? I knew I should have stayed here and kept an eye on you. But they called a special cheerleading practice, and it's top of the pom-pom pyramid. I do have certain responsibilities. Wait a minute, then you weren't at the mall today? Why would I be at the mall? You're such an idiot. <laughs> if you weren't, then who? <laughs> oh, Norman, I had such a wonderful time. <laughs> Norman, I'd like you to meet my son, Matthew. Oh, we've met. Matt, you're gonna laugh. <laughs> Remember when you asked me to uh, say hi to your sister? Well, when I saw Eileen here in the hall, naturally I thought she was your sister. <laughs> Norman, would you like some coffee? Oh, thank you. I haven't had a good cup of coffee since I don't know when. <laughs> Norman. Hmm? That's my mother. Yep. You know, I saw your mom in the hall, but I just didn't know how to approach her. 
The sister bit was just what I needed. Thanks, kid. It's pretty slimy, Norman. <laughs> pretty effective, Matthew. So, how was the term paper sale? <laughs> Wow, yeah. Remember Sam Cook? Oh, yes! I hear something saying. That's the sound of the men working on the train. Gang! <laughs> Music was so much more fun back then. Do you remember on Sunday nights when Ed Sullivan would have the hottest groups on? Oh, yeah, but you'd have to wait while some Japanese guy tried to spin 40 plates on sticks while they played... Oh, Norman, Norman, you're gonna die. You know who's in town tonight? Japanese guy? <laughs> no, no, the drifters, and I know where we can get tickets. Uh, well, actually, I'm a little short of cash. Oh, please, let me take you. I, I just found some extra money in my purse today. <laughs> I don't know, Eileen. Oh, please, Norman. And then when you sell one of your articles, you could take me to uh, Paris. Deal. <laughs> you just relax. I will be ready in five minutes. Wait, wait a minute, Mom. D didn't you have plans with, with Mort tonight? Oh, uh, it was uh, nothing specific. I'll just call him and let him know. Um, Matthew, I want you to keep Norman entertained. Don't let him leave. <laughs> My pleasure, Mother. <laughs> Well, Norman, the nostalgia rap really worked great. How'd the struggling artiste bit go over? <laughs> hey, come on. I was very straight with your mother. I didn't tell her I was Shakespeare. I just said I was a writer. Come on, Norm, you're an old man. <laughs> when a guy reaches your age and you haven't sold anything yet, you're not a writer. You're a failure. <laughs> no offense, you understand. <laughs> None taken. That's too bad. Look, let's face facts. You're a grown man, flat broke, and leeching off a woman who, again, pardon the expression, works for a living. I am not leeching. Oh, come on. Did you borrow a flower, some candy, a bauble? Look, Matt, I don't have a job yet. I don't have furniture, and I'm... I'm talking to a kid who is younger than my socks. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> All right, I didn't want to have to do this, but I'm going to have to tell you the truth, sir. My mother's insane. <laughs> you see, my real father died when I was five, and it affected my mother deeply. So when she's dating someone, she becomes super protective. It, it starts with little things, but soon she's calling you every half hour. And if she can't find you, she starts to shake uncontrollably, and we have to call a doctor and have her tranquilized. <laughs> I just thought you ought to know. You may be letting yourself in for a lot of grief. Not bad. <laughs> See, I would have gone quicker and just said she had diphtheria. Okay, let me level with you. My mother's got a boyfriend and she's just using you to make him jealous. She's just dying to become Mrs. Mort Stumplerut. The Mort Stumplerut of Stumplerut Lumberyards? The guy who does his own commercials? A woman is just a woman, but you can build things with wood? <laughs> So he has an irrational love of wood, but my mother cares for him deeply. <laughs> my mom just got off the phone with Mort. He's history. <laughs> and speaking of current events, hello. Hi, you must be Julie. I've heard so much about you. Hey, then you must have been in the men's room at the train station lately. <laughs> okay, uh, listen, uh, Julie, would you do me a favor? Uh, I was just sort of wondering if you could uh, tell your mom that I hopped across the hall for a second. Tell her... Just knock and I'll be ready. Julie, it's been a pleasure. And Matthew... <laughs> that guy is a fox. I like him. Gee, you played her pretty cool. You want to wipe the drool off your chin? <laughs> You're just mad because Mom found someone better than that foul Mort stumple butt. 
That's real close, Julie. It's Stumpel Rutt. And you'd be a lot better for Mom than this guy. Why don't you let her decide who's better for her for a change? Well, I've tried that, but it doesn't work. I mean, Mom's great, but when it comes to finding men, she'd go to a millionaire's convention and wind up dating the bellboy. I'm telling Mom that Norman's across the hall. And Matthew, let her be happy. Give her a break. Maybe this guy will be good for her. Not a chance. It's too much like me. <laughs> oh, hey, Jewel. What? Who's Ed Sullivan? Who is Ed Sullivan? Everybody knows who Ed Sullivan is. He's the guy in the Billy Joel video. <laughs> so, Mort's coming over to propose? Yep, she'll be here any second. And just finished a little something for him to say. Tell me what you think. And so I lean. I ask you on bended knee, make my life complete, make me whole, be my wife. Huh? What do you think? I don't know, Matt. Didn't make me quiver. <laughs> Nothing makes you quiver that doesn't have filling in the middle. <laughs> what is that drilling sound? Oh, that's just Norman. I nailed his front door shut this morning. <laughs> It'll give Mort more time. Th he should have been here already. Okay, honey. I'm all dressed up. What is this surprise you have for me? Well, I, I can't tell you, but I can give you a clue. Just practice saying yes, okay? <clears throat> Come on. Norman, <laughs> you look beautiful. Listen, would you go out with me this afternoon? Yes. <laughs> uh, I'll just go get my purse. I'll be back in a second. You are such a doll. <laughs> Gee, you look surprised to see me, buddy. It's because he was expecting Mort. Oh, 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 yeah, your mom's boyfriend. That's what I came over to tell you. You're gonna laugh. <laughs> See, you never fixed the loose floorboard in my apartment. And I remembered how good you said Mort was with wood, so early this morning I gave him a call. He came over to give me an estimate. Then I left to mail some things to various publishers. <laughs> By the time I got back, somebody had nailed Mort into my apartment. <laughs> Pretty funny, huh? Okay, I'm all set. Got your wallet, Mom? <laughs> Yes, honey, thank you. Have a really good time. Oh, we will. Thanks again, kid. <laughs> Gee, he's good. <laughs> Shut up, Eli. I'm gonna get this guy. It's a personal challenge now. I'm pulling out all the stops. He's gone. Out of here. History. What about Mort? Let him rot. <laughs> Eli, take a letter. Address it to Norman. Dear Mr. Lamb, my associates and I were very impressed with your submission. We, we are, are always, always looking, looking for, for new talent. talent. Your writing shows a refreshing flair and a special originality. So it is our pleasure to offer you a position with our magazine's New York office. Please be ready to start work first thing Monday morning. Congratulations. Sincerely, Lawrence C. Crane, editor, Newsweek. Oh. <sighs> I can't believe it. A job in New York, it's everything you've always dreamed of. I know. And I'm turning it down. <laughs> but why? A week ago, I would have taken it in a second. But now that I've met you, the job doesn't seem as important anymore. Oh, Norman. No, 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 now. Get dressed up. I am taking you out tonight. And if you wouldn't mind. Would you wear this? Oh. Oh, it's beautiful. It's in good company. Excuse me. <sighs> Norman. <laughs> As a friend, I gotta ask you to reconsider. How could you turn down a great job like that? It's easy. There was no job. You wrote this letter. 
How'd you know? Oh, come on, give me a little credit. First of all, I've barred your mother's typewriter, so I recognize the typeface. And secondly, Newsweek would never spell special, speckle. <laughs> I gotta get Eli a thesaurus. By the way, thanks again. You keep getting me in great with your mother. <laughs> Look, kid, I know you're just being protective. I don't blame you. But believe me, your mother and I have a good time together. I'm not out to con her, I'm not out to take her, and I'm not out to hurt her. We're just two people who have a lot in common and have a good time when we go out. You can understand that, right? No. Okay, look. I'm gonna stay in this building, I'm gonna keep taking your mother out, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Look, don't you see that every scam you try, I just turn it around on you? I mean, you're good. But let's face it. <laughs> I'm better. <laughs> So what do you say, huh? Let's call a truce, okay? Well, you promise you're gonna be good to my mother. Promise. Well, you, you did buy her a nice present. Where'd you get the money for that, anyway? I borrowed it. Well, how are you gonna pay it back? Ah, you thought I couldn't sell anything, right? Well, the same day I got your letter, I got one from Atlantic Monthly. I sold them a feature. Checks in the mail. Oh, I should be getting it by Friday. Friday. <laughs> uh, How did you know that? Norm? <laughs> You gonna laugh? I'm Max Robinson. Coming up tonight on the Channel 5 News at 10, could you fall prey to the pen pal pirates? We'll have an exclusive Unit 5 report on a prison inmate scam that bilks victims out of millions of dollars. Also tonight, live team coverage of the Chicago Cubs homecoming. All that and more at 10. <laughs>